Welcome to our daily Timothy Time. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with an open King James Bible. The title of today's message is Preach the Word and it's from 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. It's a phrase in that opening part of the verse. That's the title of the message and what I want to do today is preach on, on, on that, that, that topic or title, Preach the Word. And where, how I came about uh, 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 putting this message together uh, is, earlier this year, I was in Chicago at Shorewood Bible Church. We were at the uh, uh, GSB Students Training for Service uh, Weekend Conference. And on the Sunday night, I got asked if I wanted to bring the message to the brothers. And my topic was, just preach the word. And on the, on the Friday night, Brother Richard Jordan got up, he opened the conference. And during the weekend, we had Ted Fellows, we had um, Ted Fellows, John Festigan, Alex Kurz, and Rick Jordan Jr. the third. And I got that, that closing slot on the Sunday night. And that was uh, due to Brother Fred Beckermeyer, or Pastor Fred, uh, Fred Beckermeyer. Uh, he had some, some health issues that, and he couldn't make the trip, sadly. So, um, you know, and I was flying in from overseas, so I got asked if I'd like to do that message, and I did. And here's the thing, now, months down the line, I've thought about that message I presented that night. And by the way, you can see that message on Shorewood Bible Church's website. If you go back to April, I think it was April 30th, you'll, um, Sunday the 30th of April, you'll see that all the, that conference messages are up there. You know, I've had a couple of months to think about it, and the more I've thought about it, I, I, I thought to myself, you know, mate, if, you know, like any preacher, once you've preached a, preached a message, and then as you, a couple of months down the line, you can, you can look back over your notes, you go, oh, I said that, you know, and, and obviously as you grow in the scriptures, as you, as you and I spend time reading God's word and, 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 get, and getting perfected, you could look at a message from a year ago and go, oh, I would have taken a completely different angle at that. And that's what I found with this, um, with this, this topic. Just preach the word. So today I'd like to just preach the word. Same message, but I've got a co I'm coming in from different angles. So if you watch the video that's up on Shorewood site, uh, and if you did take the notes and you listen to today's message, there will be parts in it that you'll go, okay, he's repeating himself. But there will also be, there's a few more aspects uh, that I would like to bring to you today in, in this message titled Preach the Word. So that's, that's the, how this came about. And let's get into the nitty gritty. If you've got your Bibles there, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, sorry, not chapter 2, chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. While you're turning it, let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to preach your word. Preach the word, as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. I pray that as uh, the, the, the hearers, when they hear these words, that they be edified, may they be comforted, may they take this message back to their own study and 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 prove it you know as it says in your word in thessalonians prove all things i pray this in and in and through your son our lord and savior jesus christ's name amen right folks let's get into what i want to do let me explain how i'm going to do today's um, uh, time together i'm going to read to you verse 1 down to verse 5 so that's second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 down to verse 5 as, and I'm just going to give it a read through. And as I'm reading through, I'm going to elucidate on a few points that I just want to very quickly bring up to you and submit to you for your further thought. Once I've done that, I'm going to focus in on, on verse 2. And that phrase, preach the word. There's a, I've got five bullet points I want to share with you and, um, and, uh, uh, and get some... Uh, and and kind of... There's so much going on in that phrase, preach the word. So I want to uh, bring this, uh, bring five points to you to help your thinking, if I can say it like that. So let's get started. I charge thee. Now, who's the thee? That's Timothy. Uh, therefore, now, isn't it, you know, if, you, if you've been in the, um, if you've listened to any grace preachers that preach and teach from a King James Bible, that word, therefore, is such an important word. 
And just about all the preachers that I allow myself to listen to will always bring up this point of therefore. When you see that word therefore, you need to take into account what was written beforehand. You've got to look at the context of where you're at. That's important. So Paul, Paul writes, I charge. Now that word charge, you go look that up in a dictionary. Charge. He's telling Timothy, hey, Tim, I charge you. Uh, the therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now, just very quickly, that's talking about uh, to, to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. That's the judgment seat of Christ for us as members of the body of Christ. And then when he says there, uh, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That's talking about the great white throne judgment. Now, that's just a very brief overview of that, in case you were ever wondering. Okay, let's move on down. Verse 2, preach the word, be instant in season. What does that mean, in season? What's he talking about seasons for? Season, well, you get invited to a conference, be instant in season. Hey, preach the word. And then it goes on to say in the, in the verse there, out of season. So you're not at a conference. You're not preaching on a Sunday morning. If you're a lady and you, you're doing your ladies' Bible study and, and that's finished, now you're on the bus on the way home, well, that's out of season. There's somebody there and you, you, you're you sitting next to them, you strike up a conversation, hey, that's out of season. Then you, hey, can I share the gospel with you? They'll either say yes or no. If they say no, you just say, well, hey, fantastic. Enjoy your day. If you ever want to hear the gospel, here I am. You know where I am. Give them a call card or something. So, let, so be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Reprove. Now, what on earth does that mean? It's reprimand somebody. Reprove them if if they've if they're not preaching sound doctrine, which we'll talk about now. Hey, reproof. Now, this is in the context of the local church. Keep that in mind. Reprove, and then rebuke. Well, that's a sharp disapproval of somebody's behaviour. You got somebody that that gets a bit thirsty and goes down to the pub, and, and um, uh, 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 kind of walks in the flesh, has a couple of jabulis, gets lack of runny onscons. Well, he's going to get a rebuke, and then Paul goes on to say to exhort. That's to encourage, you know, in my understanding, um, to to urge somebody, to encourage somebody. Uh, obviously, that's pushing them toward studying, reading the Word of God rightly divided. And with all long suffering, well, folks, we know what long suffering is. You know, sometimes, you, you know, when we you you might be in a situation where you you got to bite the bullet. You know, you you long suffering. You got to you know, you might be in a ministry where you like I am, and there's not many people around here that want to hear the word of God, let alone rightly divided. So you persevere. You you long suffer through it. Moving on, um, and long suffering and doctrine. Now, come with me back over to First Timothy. That 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 uh, that word doctrine very important. Now, our daily Timothy time. We got two theme verses for this channel. Second Timothy chapter two fifteen, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the other uh, 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 theme scripture that we that we've got that we that we wear as our banner is First Timothy chapter four thirteen, where Paul says, "Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine." And then drop down to verse sixteen: "Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine; continue in them." Now, what doctrine? Well, it's obviously the doctrine of Paul's being. Uh, um, speaking to Timothy about and we're going to speak about that in a little bit more depth uh, um, just in a short while anyway back to the verse come with me back to 2nd Timothy chapter 4 let's just get through that the, the section here for a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine they will not endure sound doctrine folks just look around outside now I, I, my, I don't know who my audience is here there's possibly some Protestants listening to me. There's probably some Catholics listening to me. There's probably all flavors of pro, uh, Protest, of pro, Protestants listening to me. All flavors, more than likely. Um, and there's probably some grace believers listening to me right now. So when it says there, endure sound doctrine, let's, let, me, let me help your thinking. Maybe, maybe you've always wondered about that word sound doctrine. Anyway, let's have a look at it. Come with me back to, we're in 2 Timothy, 
Come with me back to chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. You know, we're talking about that issue of sound doctrine. Chapter 1 verse 13. Oh, I'm, I've gone over to 1 Timothy. Let me just get my story correct. So 1 Timothy chapter 13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me. That's Paul, okay? In faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Come with me over to chapter 2. Chapter 2 verse 2. Look what Paul says to Timothy again. Look, listen to this. Um, we'll go from verse 1. Thou therefore. Now that word therefore. <laughs> Is an important word. You've got to take into context what was written beforehand. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 2 is where I'm driving home here. And the things that thou hast heard of me. Who's me? Paul. Among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to, able, able, look at that word, able to teach others also. In God's word is a design for our edification. So you will be able to, to uh, preach and teach. Now, if you are able to preach and teach, listen to this. If you go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 13, this is the result of being able to teach with, with the form of sound words. For this cause... Also, thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, that's Paul. When uh, Paul, obviously that's us, that's a plural. So who's, whomever was traveling, uh, Silvanius and Timotheus and Paul, okay, in the context there. Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. And this is the result of being able to teach, when you teach with the former sound words, uh, the word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Folks, if you getting Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the Hebrew epistles banged into your ears week in and week out, that's not God's design for our edification. Do we need to read that and understand it? Yes, we do. But the design for our edification to get us established and to 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 be uh, to become perfected saints so that we can go out and do the work of the ministry that design is found in paul's epistles only romans to philemon and we're going to speak a bit a, bit, a little bit more about that just now come with me back to second timothy chapter uh, chapter four um oh okay hang on second timothy uh, chapter two verse seven that issue of sound doctrine let's go back to that Sound doctrine is what Paul's teaching. Look what Paul says in, in chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Paul writes this. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. So when you and I study out Paul's epistles, Romans to Philemon, the study of Paul's epistles is going to take us all through God's word. That is a fact. So keep that in mind. And in um, chapter 2, verse 14. Look what it says here. Now we're talking about that issue of... Uh, come with me back to Second Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now we're talking about sound doctrine. So this is what's going to happen. Of these things put them... Now we're going back to chapter 2, verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but, subvert, but to the subverting of the hearers. See that words to no profit? If you're not preaching sound doctrine and the word of God rightly divided, you're gonna be, you, 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 your words are going to be to no profit. And, if, yeah, and, and you know, just read on down through that passage, what happened to Hymenaeus and Philetus. Their word will eateth, doth a canker. Isn't that a beautiful part of scripture, piece of scripture? So, folks, um, let's get on with uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3. So, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall reap unto themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away the ears from truth, from the truth. Okay, truth. We'll speak a bit more about truth just now, but just very quickly. Truth. John 17, 17. God's word is truth. Okay? So they're going to leave truth and the word of God rightly divided, I might add, and they shall be turned to fables. So that's falsehoods. That's 
inventions that they come up with, fables. But Timothy said, Paul says to Timothy, but watch down all things, endure reflections, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So that's the passage that um, that's the passage that we that we're dealing with now. What I want to do for the remainder of the time we got uh, left today, I want to look at that phrase in verse two, which says, "Preach the word, preach the word." For, uh, gentle listener, bullet point number one. In Paul's day, he didn't have the 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 modern versions issue now and from my understanding there was the the heck zappler that was out and you got the septuagint and that um well hang on let me just get that right i, I you know I, if brian ross was listening to me now, i'm sure you'd correct me um and 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 rightfully so but uh yeah well, the the heck zappler that was origin Mm, this is a bit after Paul. So hang on, let me just all what I've just said now. Forget all that stuff or about the the, the Septuagint and Hexapla. My mind was racing ahead with some other stuff in manuscript evidence. Forget that. <laughs> if that sparks some interest, that's a wonderful topic to look at. Manuscript evidence. Anyway, let me get back to what I want to say here. So, in Paul's day, when he was penning uh, uh, the Word of God. He didn't have the like we have today in 2023 and in this modern era uh, after Westcott and Hort rocked up on the scene. We, we've got the modern versions problem. Okay, so to preach the word, you need to have God's word. Now, my next few uh, uh, words coming out of my mouth could be could step on toes. And if they do. I don't, um, I don't apologize for it. I'm making a stand. And this is where the homework on the part of your side will come in. If you are using a modern version, you need to consider a few things. Okay. So in our time, we've got the modern versions problem. I think to me and my understanding right now, and I submit this to you, if you've got a Bible in fact, let's let's get to scripture. Come with me to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter ten. To sum up the whole Bible issue, modern versions versus the King James Bible, you got people that are for the King James Bible, and then you got folks that are for the modern versions. Um, this ministry, we are pro King James Bible, one hundred percent. Um, how did I learn about the King James Bible? Well, when I was studying through Grace School of the Bible, uh, uh, president of GSB, Richard Jordan, he taught a section on manuscript evidence. And going through, matriculating through that stuff, there is absolutely no way that anybody that with a, with a, with a, with a, with a heart that wants to learn and, and, and wants to see how the King James Bible came about uh, the doctrine of preservation, um, inspiration, uh, illumination, and there's a fourth one. The fourth one e escapes me now. But we studied all that, and I look at it and go, wow, it's the King James Bible in our English language, for, and preservation, that's the word. That, the King James Bible is God's word, preserved through a multiplicity of copies down through the ages. The modern versions are not. So there's a verse that um, I want to show you quickly. Here. If you if you got Hebrews chapter ten verse seven, then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do Thy will, O God. So the volume of the book is written about me. That's not you and me, folks. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. If you've got a now, if you're a modern version user and you've never picked up a King James Bible, you wouldn't know any better. You you simply wouldn't know any better. So you're gonna have to get a King James Bible, and if you're gonna have you and get your whether you're using a new international version, uh, an NIV, whichever model of NIV that you want to use. I mean, they've got so many different models out or versions or um, versions. Let's just say it like that. Um, if you've got the, the New Living Tour, whatever version you have, 
you need to take that version and you need to get yourself a King James version and you need to look at a few things. Now, the, 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 you know, I've looked at this and I think the, the, the simplest way to explain this Bible versions issue is based on Hebrews 10 verse 7. If your Bible decreases, diminishes, uh, um, obscures, rubs out, um, adds to, subtracts from, Anything to do with the Lord Jesus Christ, his incarnation, his life, death, burial, resurrection, him sitting in the kingdom on his throne. If, if your Bible muddies it up and changes words and, and um, how do I say it, belittles, diminishes from who the Lord Jesus Christ is, your Bible then is not God's word. One example, if you come with me over to, and I'm not going to teach, this is, this is a doctrine that you're going to have to look out and look out for and study yourself, but the, the doctrine of the faith of Christ. If your modern, I know of one modern version that has the faith of Christ. I know of one. And for the life of me, I had a note here on my desk. I don't know where it's gone to now. It was uh, the, that particular version where they've actually changed it back to the faith of Christ. If your Bible does not say the faith of Christ, that's just one example. You've got major problems if you, because you need to study the doctrine of the faith of Christ. It's not our faith. Our faith rests in Christ's faith in his Father's word. So we're resting in his faith. So if your Bible takes away, diminishes, uh, 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 belittles the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's another good one. In fact, come with me to 1 John. Now, everybody knows this one. This is, not a, this is not something new. Everybody knows this one. If your Bible does not contain this verse, well, you've got a problem, you know, because this is the deity of God. 1 John chapter 5. we just read from verse 5. Who is he that come, overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bear, beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. You know, the Russellites don't like this verse. Who are the Russellites? The Jehovah's Witness crew. They don't like that verse. They, you, you know, um, Verse 8, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. See that verse 7? If your Bible does not have that, you've got a problem. And there are lots of examples like that uh, going through through uh, through the word of god how you how the modern versions either, either add subtract uh, 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 watered down etc etc that goes all the way back to the garden of eden the lord told adam you can read what the account with the exact wording that god said to adam and then when the serpent comes along and asks eve eve absolutely butchers it up so it's the yea hath God said society. So that's my first point. Getting back to, come with me back to 2 Timothy. Come with me back to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. So number one, you cannot preach the word effectively if you do not, in our English language, preach, teach, and read and study and believe the King James Bible. Now, side note, I never started out with the King James Bible. I started out with a NKJV, and the New King James Bible. Then I then I went even more backwards, and I went on, and I got gifted the New American Standard Bible. And then only years later, listening to a grace preacher, Brother John Fustigan, uh, out of California, he was teaching out of a King James Bible, and I was using a New King James Bible. And I saw some things. I went, hang on, this is not the word of God here in my hands. And I went and bought a King James Bible and I've never looked back. So that's the first point. Preach the word. You've got to have, in our English language, a King James Bible. Now, I know there are people that will be doing hey, the Michael Jackson hey, popping wheelies around their house, absolutely freaking out about that. And when we did that manuscript evidence class, Brother Richard Jordan made it quite clear. 
shed light, not heat. Which is, I, I find that quite hard, actually. But um, shed light, not heat on this particular topic. So, number one, you need a Bible you can trust. If you go to our opening st uh, video, we, there's a couple of points we mentioned there. We said, we, uh, uh, what are we about? We're about a gospel that you can believe, a Bible you can trust, a study you can understand, a life you can live, and a purpose you can fulfill. Those five purpose statements. You know, so uh, the Bible, you need to have the correct Bible. Anyway, that's bullet point number one. Number two, preach the word. Okay, come with me. Let's, um, let's look at some, some Bible characters. Preach the word. And, uh, and, there's, and uh, so bullet point number two is once you've got the King James Bible, the next thing you need to do is you need to, you need to know how to approach God's word. And we're going to get into that now. Matthew chapter 4, if you will. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From this time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven, heaven is at hand. The Lord Jesus Christ preached the word. What was he preaching? That the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Gentle listener, you probably know this already, but maybe you don't. If you've made it this far in this, in this today's message, um, you, you take this into account. What Jesus was preaching is not the same gospel we preach today. It's different. Okay. Look, come with, come with me back to Matthew chapter 3. We go one chapter back. In those days came John the Baptist preaching. What was John preaching? Verse 2. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, the gospel of the kingdom. We don't preach that today. We preach the gospel of the grace of God. Come with me to Acts 20. I'm sure it's Acts 20. I hope it's Acts 20. Um, Acts 20 verse 24. I'm taking a wild shot here. I hope I've got it right. Yes, Acts 20 verse 24. Obviously read in the context. But look what, look what, look what the, uh, the physician Luke writes here. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, go read Galatians chapter 1, verse 1 and 11 and 12, with regard to that phrase there. I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Folks, when you preach the word, you and I have to, if you, if you want to get folks saved, if you want to get, once they're saved, now they need to, they, 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 they need to be, they, they're sanctified life, they walk, they, they're babes in Christ once you've just been saved. Now you've got to feed them a bit of milk, you've got to get them established and further established, okay? How do you do that? Romans to Philemon. Romans is that first book of doctrine that, that establishes your foundation and your inner man, okay? So the first big thing you need to do when you get saved is you need to distinguish the see the, the 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 distinguish things that differ in the bible there's two main programs the prophetic kingdom program which has got to do with israel and a king sitting on a throne in land on some physical visible literal earthly land in jerusalem that's the, the prophetic program then there's the mystery which was kept secret since the foundation of the world. Folks, you need to see that distinction. So getting back to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, when Paul writes there, preach the word, I submit to you. It's, you, need, you and I, now obviously in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, in fact, let me turn back there. There's something quite important I want to bring up here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, preach the word. But two chapters beforehand, Paul says this in verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, you need to, you need to rightly divide. There's five dispensations and there's two main programs. Okay, so when Paul says preach the word, he's expecting you to know this 
In fact, when you're in the book of Timothy, Paul expects you to have covered what's going on in Romans. Romans 16.25, you've just heard me mention it. Romans 16.25, if you will. I'll read it to you. Now to him that's of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Folks, whoever you are in denominationalism, I have, I have not physical punch-ups, but I have some stiff conversations with some folks that just will not hear that verse, will not understand it because of the doctrinal uh, traditions that they've got from in their denominations. Okay, so when Paul says preach the word, he expects you to have covered the book of Romans. Okay, he expects you to understand 2 Timothy chapter 2.15, rightly divide the word of truth. So all I'm doing here today is just expounding on, on what Paul's already taught us. Right division. Okay, so my last point on bullet point two here. You need to look at when Paul says preach the word, you and I go to the word, you need to rightly divide it. Time passed, but now the age is to come. In fact, come, let's just read the verse. Ephesians chapter 2, um, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye, that's the Gentiles, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye, that's the Gentiles, were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. See, aliens do exist. We were aliens. Uh, um, and please don't take that out of context and say that I'm saying that these aliens, these boogalooks that come out of the sky and spaceships. No, aliens. Look what it says in the verse. Uh, uh, from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of prom promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Okay, so there is, wherefore remember in time past, Look what verse 13 says. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes will fall, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Back up to verse 7. Paul speaking about the ages to come. He says here, in that, in the eight, um, verse 6. And, he, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Folks, remember this. You and I have got to think about heaven as a present possession. Back to the back to the verse here. Verse 7. That, the purpose and intent, that in the ages to come, he might shew, shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. So there's time past. There's but now in the ages to come. When we go to the word of God, when you're reading Paul's epistles, Romans to Philemon, that's the but now. This is the age of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God. The books from Genesis through Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right up to, to, to mid-Acts, uh, mid-Acts 7, 8, around there. In fact, Paul got saved in Acts 9. That's when the church, the body of Christ, started. Those books there, that's, that's time past. Paul's books, Romans to Philemon, that is, uh, the, that's the but now, the dispensation of grace. Then, when the body of Christ is raptured out, and we go to the judgment seat of Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ after that uh, uh, presents us to God the Father and so on and so forth. Once that's taken place and the prophetic program takes off where it left off in Acts 7 when Stephen got stoned. And then you move into the ages to come. That's key. So getting back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 when Paul says there, preach the word. Remember when we go to the word of God. You need to rightly divide the Word of God. Now, I remember when I was uh, preaching at uh, Shorewood Bible Church on that Sunday night, the 30th of April, for that um, students' training for service conference, I remember drawing that all out on the chalkboard. So there's a Bible timeline there. If you watch the video, you'll see it. Anyway, bullet point number three that I want to bring up with this, with this um, issue of preach the Word. You know, we, we, you know, a, a few times in my ministry, I've had folks say to me, "But you cut up the Bible." You know, you everything's about Paul, Paul, Paul. It's all you, you ever on about is Paul, and you're on about just Romans to Philemon, Romans to Philemon. You, you, I've had that. Maybe you've had it too. In fact, if you're a Pauline a dispensationist, Acts nine grace believer, and you're in a position where you're teaching, you go. If you haven't had it, you're going to get that. Now, if you're in denominationalism listening to me, you haven't had it yet. 
but if you if you let the words say what they mean and mean what they say you'll click you get the key that'll open up the bible and then and then then you'll then the word of god will work effectively in them that believe once you understand paul's a person anyway, i'm digressing let me get back on track so a lot of the time folks will say but you cut up the bible no we don't uh, uh, we do not just preach you know when paul says preach the word we do not just simply preach from paul's epistles we spend a lot of time there yes we do but when you do something when you're studying and reading through paul's epistles when you when you when you comparing verse with verse when you're doing your exegesis how's that nice expensive big word when you're doing that the word paul's where, where you, when you're reading paul's epistles paul's going to take you back into time past and you're going to be looking at all different other parts of the bible now here's the thing a verse that comes to mind um roman come with me back to romans 15. now folks maybe some of you have know this stuff backwards and forwards and maybe this is just a refresher for you but maybe just maybe there might be one soul that's never heard this before so let this be a refresher or this could be information for you uh, romans chapter 15 romans 15 romans 15 verse 4 uh, for whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. So whatsoever things are written aforetime. So when we preach the Word, it's not just from Paul's epistles. You know, five minutes ago I was telling you about rightly divide the Word of Truth. Romans to Philemon. Well, that's where you find the edification uh, uh, design laid out there. That's where it's laid out. Romans to Philemon. But we do not discount leave out diminish anything else of romans uh, from genesis through to malachi matthew mark luke and john up to mid acts and neither hebrews through the revelation the hebrew epistles as it's known we read it all it's it, it, all the bible it, the bible oh, there's a there's a saying the bible is all of the bible is not for us i can't remember the phrase but there's a whole bunch of books that are for us, for our learning, and there's 13 epistles that are to us. And remember, the book is not about us. Just now, I spoke to you about Hebrews 10 verse 7. The book is about the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that. Anyway, so we 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 preach. When you when we back to that Second um, Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, preach the word. So we rightly divide, but we don't only read Paul's epistles. We read everything. Okay, now, second, come with me back to 2 Timothy. Early on, I read to you verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God. Okay, so therefore, what did Paul say beforehand? Well, let's have a look here. But evil men, I'm going to go from verse 13. I'll pick up from there. In fact, verse 12. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Oh, man. Um, in the things that thou hast learned. Well, we we'll learned what? From Paul. The form of sound words. Remember chapter 1, verse 13. Uh, let me find where I'm in the verse. Says, thou hast learned and have been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. So from a child he has known the Holy Scriptures. Second Timothy, come with me back to Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. Look what Paul writes here. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that was in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. So, before Paul comes along, old Timmy, his granny and his mother were showing him and teaching him the scriptures. He got comfort from that, according to Romans 15.4, and it gave him hope. Paul comes along with his message, and Timothy gets saved, and he gets expounded on, and Timothy learns the, 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 the grace doctrines, just like you and I should be. So, so please keep that in mind. Okay, bullet point number four. When it's when Paul says here, preach the word. Now, this can be quite a controversial thing. Preach the word. Who, who's Paul writing to here? Paul's writing to Timothy. 
First Timothy, the, the first, second Timothy, Titus, you know, those are your pastoral epistles. Okay. It's how the church should be functioning, the local assembly. So that's that's where Paul's aiming at here with Timothy. But let's not discount the fact that there's a big mis misunderstanding where Paul says he, he would not suffer a woman to, woman to teach. Listen, Eunice, Lois and Eunice taught Timothy, okay? Priscilla, Aquila, go back to Romans 15. There's a whole bunch of ladies in that chapter, in Romans chapter, is it four, Romans chapter 14 or 15? Let me quickly turn back there. Uh, if you read through Romans chapter 15, there's a whole bunch of ladies that were, that were involved there too. You, you know, I believe, this is, this is my position, this is where I'm at, my understanding, that there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a woman teaching the Bible, the Word of God rightly divided. Absolutely nothing. I know of a number of women that do that. You've got Terry McCann. You've got uh, Marion Manley. You've got... Um, um, oh, man. They're, they're, uh, Adrian Jason. Uh, and and uh, Deborah Johnson. Um, Lisa Helmstetter. Uh, you, you've got women that understand the Word of God who are mature saints. Uh, what Cynthia Jordan, you got uh, uh, Sherry Sherry Kurz, um, Mrs. Welke. Oh man, the list goes on and on and on. So women can teach; they've got a position of teaching, just not a pastoral position. So when you when Paul says preach the word, he's also talking about. He, he's he, he if you're a if you're a if you're not a pastor, let's just say that you can still you're still an ambassador for Christ. You still God's represent the Lord Jesus Christ representative here on earth while he's away in royal exile. Yes, in royal exile. Some people will totally flip out about that word. He's in royal exile. So we his ambassadors in a world that doesn't like him. Think of Psalms chapter two. Go read Psalms chapter two. Uh, for the sake of how oh, we're running out of time here. Psalms two. Let's quickly just give that a Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves in the and the rulers take counsel, counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Folks, so just because you don't hold the title of pastor doesn't mean that you cannot preach the word. So I, I submit to you when Paul says preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Yes, in the context of that passage, he's talking to Timothy about the local assembly. But if you're a young young uh, a boy or young girl and, and you've understood some things in the Bible, firstly, the gospel that saves today. How the Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again according to the scriptures on the third day. First Corinthians 15, chapter 3 and 4. You and go back to Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 28. Read that down and study that out. Um, if, you've, if you've got a, a clear, crisp gospel presentation ready to go, hey, get out there and preach the word. Be tactful in how you do it, but preach the word. So that's so when Paul says preach the word, it's not limited just to the local assembly and the pastor. It's to mothers that teach their children. It's to anybody that's not a pastor in life, wherever you are at at the time. We are ambassadors. My fifth point, preach the word. Preach the word. Now, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking now, uh, you know, I've got five bullet points. There's just so much more to speak about when Paul says preach the word. There's, we can dance through the scriptures happily and joyfully looking at different verses. But time's running out here. So I'm going to close with bullet point number five. When Paul says they preach the word, we've, we've looked now and we've seen, okay, well, well where, what is your objective standard? What is your final authority in our English language? It is the King James Bible. If it's not, please consider uh, looking into that issue and checking it out. In fact, I've got another bullet point that I, another point that I want to bring up about the King James Bible. I'll do it just now. Um, so, number one, King James Bible. Number two, rightly divide the word of truth. Bullet point three, just because we the the uh, the, 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 the design for our edification is found in Romans to Philemon, that does not mean we discount anything out. I got accused one another accusation 
that I that I leave out the early acts. Just simply, the reason why I got accused of that is because I told a, a leader of a church that the church, the body of Christ, did not start in Acts 2. It started in Acts 9 when Saul of Tarsus got saved. And then he accused me of, yeah, but you, but you, you discount and you leave out the early part of Acts. I said, no, I don't. Anyway, so we've looked at that. Um, who's to preach when Paul says preach the word? Well, that's pastors and people that are apt to teach. And it's any ambassador too, ambassador for Christ, anybody that's been, that's had the righteousness the righteous of God imputed to their account, that they justified, saved is another word. You are an ambassador and you, we've got jobs to do. We've got to get out there, okay, and preach the word. So it's for, for all the body of Christ, all the saints. Okay, bullet point number five, it's, it, Paul says there, preach the word. Preach the word, that's God's word. John 17, come with me to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, if you will. John chapter 17, verse 17. Now, this is a good old, this is a, a lovely verse. I should be able to quote it off by heart. Sometimes I can't, today I just simply can't. Don't know why. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay, remember, this book is about the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when Paul says, preach the word. Okay, that's his word. Thy word is truth. You can also go read uh, the, the Gospel of John, that opening account in John there. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I'm in John chapter 1 here. Look what he says there. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word... Uh, hang on. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So, thy word is truth. Oh, man, that's just such an action-packed statement. So we preaching God's word, not the wisdom of this world, not the wisdom of men. Now, first, uh, if you come with First uh, Corinthians chapter one, I'll just I'll just take you from verse um, verse seventeen. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, less. The cross of Christ shall be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that uh, perish foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the dispute of this world? The dispute is like a lawyer. He's, he's, he's going to dispute you know, and argue. Uh, of this world hath God not hath God hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now we can elaborate a lot more, but that's not my intent today. But um, folks, preach the word, not some philosophers and all those Greek guys, you know, and and the modern philosophers of today. We are to preach God's word. Preach the word. Life gets a bit hard. You can go online and there's motivational speakers galore, galore. Oh, there's this guy, there's that guy, there's this woman, there's that woman. And they could all preach to you all that motivation stuff. But folks, our we are to preach God's word. You've got problems in your life. Maybe you're drinking too much. Maybe you've got a drugs problem. Maybe you're a womanizer. Maybe you're a woman that's a manizer. I don't know how you pronounce that properly. But maybe whatever issues you're dealing with, hey, go preach the word. Go look at Romans chapter 6. Learn about your identity in Christ. Don't run to all the, 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 the modern guys that are going to give you all their thoughts and wisdom that they've mustered up in their experience. The, we have and we are people of the book. We have an objective standard. In the English language, it's in the King James Bible. Now, I had another point about the King James Bible, but time's up for today and we've, we've covered a lot of ground. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Now, if you are, if you've not yet covered the book of Romans, if you've not understood uh, uh, the whole issue of justification, of who you are in Christ, what happened to Israel, and how we meant to walk and function and apply the grace that we've learned in Romans to our lives, if you haven't covered that book of Romans yet. This ministry is doing a, a at the moment, it's, it seems to be like a verse by verse study in the book of Romans. We're still in the early phase, we're in Romans chapter 1, verse 3 at the moment. 
in the playlist on this channel, you will find the Romans uh, uh, teaching so far. Please take the time and watch those. They're generally quite short, very informative. <coughs> Excuse me. And we need to <coughs> lay that foundation in our inner man. So before you get out there and preach the word, number one, make sure you know <coughs> the, how to present a clear, crisp, clean gospel presentation. Know who you are in Christ. Know what happened to Israel. And then just know the basics of, of Romans 12 right to the end. Okay. I would suggest you get that understanding first. Then go out and preach the word. First step. Know how to present the gospel. And here's the gospel in closing. <coughs> um, over in Hebrews... Now, I'm, I'm going to give you the gospel. I've asked you to turn to Hebrews. Now, some people will be scratching their head about that. But there's a, there, Paul, not, Paul doesn't write Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews, I believe it's John Mark. And um, I might be wrong, I might be right. But it's not something that I'm going to fight over. But uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Or is it Hebrews 10? It's Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. Uh, the writer of Hebrews says this. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Folks, we've all been born into this world. If you're listening to me right now, you've been born into this world. Okay? Hopefully you've been regenerated. Hopefully now you've got the indwelling Holy Spirit because you've believed the gospel that I'm going to share with you now. Um, everybody's, going, everybody's born, everybody's going to die. Okay? Here's the thing. The moment you're born into this life, old Job, look what Job says here. The moment you're born into this life, you have a sin nature. We take after Adam, and um, we've got a problem. And the first step, the gospel, and remember this, the God, when the faith is a very personal and private thing. Okay, so the first step you need to do, I'm trying to find that verse in, in Job. Uh, Judges, nope, that's not where we're going. Job, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Job, Psalms, Proverbs. There's a, a wonderful line in Job. Um, bear with me one moment as I find it. Oh, the way Job wrote wrote this. And you know, Job's the, the, that first book of the Bible. Uh, Job, 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 Job. I probably won't be able to find it now that I'm looking for it. Um, Job. Uh, uh, Job. Oh, there we go. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. <laughs> a man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Folks, so we're born into this life. we sinners. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. And then the verse carries on. Point number one. If you're listening to me now and you've never heard the gospel. Can I share the gospel with you? If you nod your head and say yes. Here it is. Number one. You're a sinner. You, you, that's the, you got to acknowledge that you're a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. If you die in Adam, you're going, Fuck a pug You're going to hell. Later on, after at least a thousand years, you're going to go to the great white throne judgment. And then you're going to die the second death. You don't want to be there. So number one, you've got to acknowledge and reckon yourself to be a sinner. Number two, there's a gift, a free gift of grace. The man, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, came, the, the theanthropic uh, um, man, Jesus Christ, God hyphen man, the God man. He came to earth, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, went to Calvary's cross, shed his blood on the cross. Um, the man, Christ Jesus, died for you. He paid your sin debt. Romans, in fact, Romans chapter 3 again. Uh, here's a very important thing to recognize. Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. 
The Lord Jesus Christ paid the sin debt. He reconciled the world back unto himself, right? That doesn't automatically mean you're saved. You need to now believe that you're a sinner and that he died for your sins. And in step number three, you got to think, this is a thinking game. It's a thinking game first, then the feelings follow afterwards. So now you've heard that you're a sinner. You need to accept that you're a sinner. Realize it. The verse tells you you're a sinner. Number two, that the Lord Jesus Christ died on Calvary. There's a free gift of eternal life through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Okay. But just because he died on the cross, it doesn't mean you saved. You need to believe that he died for your sins. And it's through point number three, a one time response of faith. It's not a repeated oh, every five minutes. Oh, 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 oh Lord. The moment you trust in the finished work, uh, work, work of Jesus Christ and Calvary's Christ, it is in, him, in him shedding his blood, uh, giving up the ghost, dying, being buried, and, and being raised again the third day. The moment you believe that, you are sealed. You, 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 you have that, um, yeah, you, you, you're sealed. You have the peace of God. You've got full assurance. Once saved, always saved. You can never, don't let anybody, any tradition tell you that you can lose your salvation. You cannot, according to the word of God, in Ephesians it says you're sealed. You, you are sealed. You cannot get unsealed. You cannot lose your salvation. Are you going to mess up in the hours and minutes and days ahead? Sadly, yes. Do we want to? No. Well, most of us don't want to. The people that are messing up all the time, me included, we need to go back to the first Corinthians and read through there, second Corinthians, read through there. You know, it's corrective doctrine in there. Hey guys, you're messing up, but this is how you're gonna fix it. So I'm not I'm not I'm I'm in I'm in I'm lumped in with you here. You know, it's um just because I'm saved it doesn't mean I'm sinless. I'm blameless, not sinless. So folks, that's the gospel. And you know what? You don't have to go anywhere. You've just heard the gospel. Now it's up to you. It's a one-time response. You can either go, Coates, oh, keep quiet, my man. You've had me on here for 56 minutes. You've bored me to tears. And now you want me to believe that. Well, it's simple. You either, you either do or you don't. And if you've walked away this time and I don't really believe that, that's okay. Maybe, just maybe by chance, someone else will share the gospel with you and you can rethink it. And then, then trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to pay any money. You, have to, you do not have to do anything. And lastly, lastly, with tears. No, I don't actually have tears in my eyes, but the saying goes, with tears in my eyes, don't let the folks baffle you with the wisdom of men, wisdom of words, and say that you must get baptized because it's an outward expression of an inward faith. If anybody tells you that, you look them in the mince pies and you walk away. They enemies of the cross. Folks, time's up for today. I trust you've had a, uh, a wonderful time of study. Please take it back to your own study, what you've heard today, the notes you've made. Run through it prayerfully. If you do have any questions, absolutely submit your questions in the comment box down below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing pressing the bell so you can be notified of, this, uh, um, of future messages. And please share this message. Share this message, please. Till we meet next time, keep your sword sharp, soldier. Grace and peace to you, Maranatha.